The dawn of the 20th century, a time of boundless ambition. Nowhere was this more evident than in the shipyards of Belfast, Ireland, where a trio of ocean liners was taking shape, destined to redefine luxury travel. The Olympic-class liners, a vision of the White Star Line, promised an unprecedented experience. They represented the pinnacle of shipbuilding. Conceived as a response to the growing demand for transatlantic travel, the White Star Line, locked in fierce competition with Cunard, sought to outdo its rival. Their answer lay not in speed, but in size and opulence. These ships would be the largest and most luxurious ever built, capturing the imaginations of the world. The Olympic, Titanic and Britannic were designed to be more than just modes of transportation. They were floating palaces, complete with grand staircases, swimming pools and Turkish baths. No expense was spared in their construction, from the intricate woodwork to the plush carpets. They were symbols of wealth, power and technological prowess. The sheer scale of these vessels was awe-inspiring. Over 880 feet long and displacing over 45,000 tons, they dwarfed any other ship afloat. Their construction was a marvel of engineering, employing thousands of workers and pushing the limits of the time. The Olympic-class liners were not mere ships, they were floating cities, embodying the dreams and aspirations of a generation. The first of her class, the RMS Olympic, embarked on her maiden voyage in 1911. She was a sight to behold, a majestic testament to human ingenuity. Her interiors were adorned with the finest materials, a symphony of elegance and comfort. Passengers marveled at the spacious accommodations and unparalleled amenities. The Olympic quickly gained a reputation for her smooth sailing and luxurious appointments. She attracted a wealthy clientele eager to experience the epitome of transatlantic travel. Celebrities, politicians and business tycoons graced her decks, adding to her allure. For a time, she reigned supreme, the queen of the seas. However, the Olympic story wasn't without its share of drama. In 1911, she collided with the British warship HMS Hawk, sustaining significant damage. The incident, while serious, proved the strength of her design, allowing her to return to port for repairs. The Olympic, it seemed, was a survivor. She continued to sail the Atlantic, even serving as a troop ship during World War I, ferrying soldiers to the battlefields of Europe. Her wartime service earned her the nickname Old Reliable. Through peace and war, the Olympic remained a steadfast presence, a symbol of endurance and reliability. The second of the Olympic-class liners, RMS Titanic, captured the world's imagination from the moment her keel was laid. She was touted by some as the unsinkable ship, a testament to the hubris of mankind. Her maiden voyage in 1912 was met with great fanfare, with passengers and crew alike eager to be part of history. The Titanic was, uh, in many ways, very similar to her older sister, the Olympic. They shared the same basic design and luxurious appointments. However, there were subtle differences. The Titanic boasted a slightly larger gross tonnage and minor modifications to her layout and facilities. Tragically, the Titanic's maiden voyage would be her last. On the night of April 14, 1912, she struck an iceberg in the North Atlantic, sinking within hours. The disaster claimed the lives of over 1,500 people, shocking the world and forever etching the Titanic's name into maritime history. The sinking of the Titanic sent shockwaves around the world. It exposed the limitations of technology and the unforgiving nature of the sea. The disaster led to significant changes in maritime safety regulations, including the establishment of the International Ice Patrol. The third and final ship of the Olympic class, RMS Britannic, was destined for a different fate than her sisters. Completed in 1915 amidst the turmoil of World War I, she never entered commercial service. Instead, she was requisitioned by the British Admiralty and converted into a hospital ship. The Britannic's luxurious interiors were stripped down and replaced with hospital beds, operating theatres and medical equipment. Her once opulent staterooms were transformed into wards, ready to receive the wounded from the battlefields. Gone was the glitter and glamour. In its place stood a vessel dedicated to healing and mercy. For a year, the Britannic plied the waters of the Mediterranean, transporting thousands of wounded soldiers to safety. 
Her white hull, emblazoned with red crosses, became a symbol of hope amidst the carnage of war. She earned the respect and admiration of all who saw her, a testament to her humanitarian mission. However, the Britannic service was tragically cut short. In 1916, while sailing in the Aegean Sea, she struck a mine and sank within an hour. Despite the speed of the sinking, only 30 lives were lost thanks to the lessons learned from the Titanic disaster. The Olympic-class liners, though their time in service was relatively short, left an indelible mark on maritime history. They represented a pivotal moment in shipbuilding, pushing the boundaries of size, luxury and technological innovation. Their impact on ocean travel was profound, influencing ship design for decades to come. The Olympic-class liners set a new standard for passenger comfort and amenities. Their luxurious accommodations, spacious public rooms and innovative features like swimming pools and Turkish baths became the benchmark for future ocean liners. They ushered in an era where transatlantic travel was no longer just about getting from point A to point B. It was about the experience. The stories of the Olympic, Titanic and Britannic continue to captivate the public imagination. The Titanic in particular has become a cultural icon inspiring countless books, films and documentaries. Her tragic fate serves as a reminder of the power of nature and the importance of safety at sea. The Olympic-class liners, though their time has passed, continue to inspire awe and wonder. They stand as a symbol of human ingenuity, ambition and the enduring allure of the sea. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and comment below if there is a minute in history you would like to see next.